I thought I would do a how-to video about something that uh, has sure made my life uh, richer. Close to a year now, I've been using AI. I've been using uh, ChatGPT, and uh, it's really really handy. Uh, yeah, uh, some warnings about it. Obviously, like everything you do on the internet, it is being recorded. Um, if you are planning to do some things that are illegal or embarrassing or whatever, or if you have, don't put it in here. This is just like putting it on... Uh, I don't know, writing yourself an email, like uh, even if you hit delete on the email, Google keeps it forever. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, however, this is a handy tool and that's just it is a tool. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to use it. And that's kind of what I'm going to go over today is uh, how I go about using it. And uh, hopefully it'll be helpful to you. So first of all, you have to form an account and that is done by going to uh, chat.openai. Uh, so this is the website right here. Uh, chat.openai.com. And you'll have to form an account just like you would uh, anywhere. Uh, you'll form that account and then uh, you will be ready to get going. So once you have your account, you are going to see something roughly uh, like my screen right now. I'm going to hide this side panel here. It shows you all of your past uh questions you've asked it. If you ever want to delete something, you can go in there, click on it once, and then hit the little uh, trash button, and then it will delete it uh, and get rid of it. So I'm just going to do this so we have more space on the screen. I have put together some questions that uh, AI can be asked, and there are some things it doesn't do so well. Uh, I find that math isn't its strong suit, but there are so many other things that it is really good at. So my first question for AI today, basically you type in the question or you copy and paste from something else, you copy and paste the question in, and then AI answers it. And I kind of think about uh, the top thousand experts from every field in the world are all hanging out and you send the question out and then they all get together to chat amongst themselves quickly, come up with the best answer they can and spit it out to you and they do it within a few seconds kind of neat. So I'm going to copy and paste this first easy question. How many ounces are in five gallons of water? And then I'm going to go over to chat GPT and I'm going to go down to the send a message at the bottom and I'm going to paste that question and ask it. And it is going to tell me here. It's going to tell me how to go about doing the math, uh, math and then it's going to tell me what it actually is. This is how many fluid ounces, 640 fluid ounces. And so it's 128 per gallon. And this will matter in just a moment. So then I think, okay, that's cool. Next thing I'm going to ask it is write a story about a little redheaded boy named Shepard who put a pinto bean on a shelf for every ounce of water in five gallons of water. Let's see how it does with this. So I'm going to paste that question in and ask it. Now, as it's thinking and as it's writing, you can kind of see it writing live if I scroll up right now and interrupt it, it keeps writing, but then I have to go into the lower uh, right-hand corner and click on this arrow to go all the way to the bottom. So I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but uh, once upon a time in a quaint little village nestled amongst rolling green hills lived a curious and imaginative boy named Shepherd. Shepherd, blah, 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 on a summer's day, blah, blah, blah. And then we get down here and, oh, look at this. I think they're going to say... Look at that. He carefully counted out pinto beans one by one until he had a mountainous pile of 640 beans. So it did the math for us uh, once again. And then, you know, if I looked at this and I said, eh, uh, write this right in the style of old English. Now it's going to rewrite the whole thing and in the style of old English. You know, in the days of yore in a tranquil hamlet nestled amidst verdant hills, blah, blah, blah. And then I think, you know what? Um, actually, uh, oh, I'm going to spell stuff wrong here to just show you. It can handle that. And it's not because I would ever misspell anything. I was an English major. Uh, actually, rewrite in Spanish. Boom. Let's see if it's able to do this. And for those of you who speak Spanish, uh, see if this is kind of close what it's doing. Uh, you can just read on your own there. And then I'm going to say... Oops, I meant Chinese. And I'm going to spell that. Oh, I think I did get that. So then let's see if it can handle Chinese. And oh, it looks like it's still writing the uh, 
Spanish. Now it's done. So I'm going to say Chinese. Oh, there we go. Now it's writing it in Chinese. Isn't that just neat? Okay, so that was, uh, those were just a couple questions. Now here's another, and I really misspelled this one on purpose. Who was it that said, give me liberty or give me death? Purposefully misspelled it. It knows what you mean, I bet you. Let's find out. We'll wait until it stops generating uh, this story in uh, Chinese. Hey, I see up here it says 640, so at least got the total number of ounces correct. Let's see if it can uh, tell me about this quote. Huh. The famous quote, give me liberty or give me death, is attributed to Patrick Henry, an American attorney, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he was the, one of the guys who refused to sign the Constitution. Remember that, dude? Uh, yeah, so there's another thing it did. Okay, well, we've asked it to do a number of things. Let's ask it to rewrite that last answer in a poem. And there we go. And I'm just doing a bunch of examples here to get your brain moving. And, you know, of course, these are not the exact things you're going to be asking. But we'll do a few more, and you can just kind of see the, the power that this has. Um, and so here it is in, a, in the poem. Yep, there we go. He, he, they, they did the answer in that format. Okay, let's uh, let's see what else I wrote here. Um, oh, yeah, rewrite that uh, the poem in the style of Shakespeare. So in this case, I'm demonstrating that it remembers when I write here that I want it to rewrite the poem. It, remind, it remembers our conversation that we're having here. So it's just going to pick up right where we left off and write it in the style of uh, Shakespeare. And I find that sometimes I have to say in the literary style of, I love Robert Ardry, so I'll say in the literary style of Robert Ardry or of literary style of King James or whatever it is you want. Yep, there we go. Looks like it did a, did a decent, decent job here. Uh, let me see what other examples I have here. I think I have a couple more. Um, oh, yeah. So here's a here is just checking. It knows, the AI knows about a bunch of popular books that have been written, probably tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Now, if you published your own book six months ago and it sold three copies, it's not going to know it. But if it's anywhere out in internet land uh, up to, I think at this point, uh, I'm doing uh, this video in late 2023, I think they know stuff up to late 2021, but even they don't know obscure things. So AI doesn't know it all. Uh, but if it's a popular book like Creature from, uh, Creature, Creature from Jekyll Island, they'll certainly know that, I hope. So we'll go back here and uh, see if it will do this for us. And I did say short poem on this one because it's a very long book and I didn't want it to go on and on and on. Um, and now an, a little note about uh, chat GPT. It is written by people who are left-leaning, who are very conscious of appearing to be um, uh, what, I don't know if it's a derogatory term now or not, but woke. Um, so it will, it is very left-leaning. However, if you ask it enough questions, it will give you what you want. Uh, but just keep in mind, it's not an impartial, objective thing. So here we go. On Jekyll's Island, shrouded shore, they'd meet a tale of secrets, bankers in retreat. The creature, hidden, plots and shadows cast, a book revealing truth from the distant past. And so, yeah, here, and then if we say, well, you know what? I want it a little bit longer. Uh, I want it three times as long. Now, I bet you it's not going to do very well with it. It's not great with math. So it'll make it longer. But if you counted the words in the first one and in the last one, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five paragraphs or five verses, whatever it stands as. And the first one was three. So it's not going to be exact, but it gets it gets there fairly close. Um, and then now I'm going to ask it uh, in plain language, not a poem. So that a sixth grader could understand. And so now it remembered what it is I'm asking about. So now we're going to talk about this, uh, this book. And that is pretty neat. Again, it won't work with all books, but many it will. Okay, I have one or two left. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's just go completely off a different direction here. Step-by-step -step instructions for... Disassembling a craftsman circular saw to make sure the power wires have not broken loose. Like, we're no longer are we talking about poetic stuff. Now we're talking about a real world solution to something. 
And so sure enough, it's going to give us safety warnings. It's got to, you know, it does its legal liability thing. And we should strongly advise to seek assistance from a, a professional, uh, what is it here? From a professional, a professional or certified technician. Yep. But then we go, you go, they go into it. Warning, ensure the saw is unplugged or it's battery removed before starting, gather necessary tools. And it's telling us here, screwdriver, pliers, multimeter, potentially or power, a replacement power cord, blah, blah, blah. Now it's going to walk through and tell us all of the steps of doing that. That is pretty handy, isn't it? Like, unless you already know how to fix everything, that's handy. Uh, let's look at this. Oh, okay, so here's a letter. Rewrite this letter to be friendly and apologetic. John, here's a Dear John letter. John, because you never made me happy, I've been getting more and more intimate with Pierre, our, our pool boy. I want to feel closer to you, and I don't think, and I don't want to leave you even though you are ugly, stink, and drink way too much strong coffee, of course, I still want to date Pierre. Are we all good? So let's ask it to this uh, this to rewrite this letter for us. Think about all the things you can do when you're writing a more serious letter or uh, doing anything like that. You could just say, write a letter of resignation. My name's Bob and the company's name is Kmart. Boom, it'll do it. And then you can tweak it. So now we're going to look here and see. Yep, look how nice and sweet. What did I ask it to do? Rewrite it to be friendly and apologetic. Um, so here it is, uh, just nice and friendly. What a nice way to let John know about Pierre. Um, so AI is handy for that as well. And then if I didn't like this, I could say something like, uh, I don't know, uh, rewrite to let John know I have been physically intimate with Pierre. Okay, I'm misspelling a bunch of stuff. So now I was going to think about it. And uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Ah, it doesn't look like it did it. Oh, you know, it looks like it. Um, oh, physically intimate. Okay, it did. Yeah. I made a mistake by seeking physical intimacy with someone else. But look how it's couching it. Isn't that interesting? So you can't always trust it to be as honest as you are. Um, because here it's making uh, the mistake of seeking or by seeking, not of the actual physical contact. So it's not always going to be perfect. Um, and sometimes you have to correct it and tell it, no, I meant this. And then it's happy to do it. And then if I said here, if I, if I wrote to AI and said that was a bad answer, be more transparent. And of course, I smelled it, spelled it wrong just for the sake of the video. So you'd know I'm imperfect. I want to completely be honest with you. I've been physically intimate with Pierre. There we go. So if you ask it to be more straightforward, it'll do it. Uh, what's I think I might have one more here. Oh, yeah. So apps. Think about all the apps that you're not sure how to use or how to do one little thing. Here, I'm wondering, in Microsoft Word, what is the shortcut key to move to the top of the next page? Uh, and so let's ask ChatGPT and see if ChatGPT knows. And I can tell you if it's correct, because I actually know this one. Control page down. Yep, it'll also work if you do control enter uh, on a uh, PC. I don't know about all that Apple Eye stuff, but uh, yep, that works. And then so I was actually wondering this. I wanted to know how to look down uh, on this piece of paper, this uh, document that I am uh, using for this video. And I didn't, and then I thought, well, I don't want to do control enter because then that will take me all the way to the next page. It'll, it'll enter another space. And so then I clarified it here. I don't want to change the document. I just want to view the next page. Let's ask it and see if it knows. Yep. Page down key on the keyboard. Simply press page down and it'll go there. Might have one more and it might be it. Oh yeah, here, that reminds me. Write a bullet point list of 10 uh, common logical fallacies along with a short description of each. Could this be handy or what? Like if you are doing anything creative in your life, this chat GPT is so helpful. Um, yeah, so there we go. Ad hominem, probably one of the most popular or most, most often uh, uh, used fallacies. Straw man, appeal to authority. Yeah, they, and these they actually picked out of the 300 plus logical fallacies there are, they actually picked some of the ones that are, in fact, the most popular, the ones that uh, that people get wrong most of the time. So yeah, that that's pretty hands handy. Let me ask it here. I'm going to say, um, 
rewrite with shorter descriptions. And, uh, oh, there we go. Look at that. Attacking the person, not the argument. Just like, how handy is this? You know, you want to do a quick Facebook post and try to wake up the two people in your uh, group of friends who actually care. And uh, <laughs> there you go. You yeah, Now you do a snip of the page, a little screenshot, boom, put it on uh, the book of faces or whatever social media you want. And whoop, there it is. Uh, I think I did put another here. Yeah, write a, uh, speaking of Facebook, write a short Facebook post in a persuasive manner in the literary style of Mark Twain, getting across the main points of No Treason, The Constitution of No Authority by Lysander Spooner, which is, of course, a compilation of three of the papers he did uh, that became that book. So let's see if it can figure this out. This is an attorney from the late 1800s. Let's see if it can do that along with the Mark Twain style. I reckon it's high time we had us a chat about this Constitution business. You see, a fellow by the name of Lysander Spooner once penned a little piece called No Trees in the Constitution, No Authority, and it sure got me thinking. And look at that. It writes it all down here for us. Uh, that's just, holy cow, the stuff it'll do. Okay, so those, those are all the examples I had. Um, if you have questions, I bet you there are other videos that are much better than this one on YouTube that will give you more ideas. Oh, you know what? Here's another thing. Uh, what are some other ideas for how I can use chat GPT? Let's see if it knows the answer to this one. Yeah, all kinds of stuff here. Oh yeah, I didn't even uh, talk about this. When I do web uh, website work, it'll write in each HTML for me. Uh, if I have a question about uh, how to use, I actually use this to create a, what to me was a complicated Excel document with a bunch of fields and uh, things that it was asking cell C4 to do about G7 and divide it by that, multiply it time. And, and it just told me how to do it all and I could copy and paste into it. If you already know Excel, then not necessary or Google Sheets. Um, but yeah, just all kinds of wonderful things. Now, if you ask it a question that it does not think is appropriate, then it will tell you so. And so I might have to cut this short if I hear a knock on the door, but um, what is the recipe for cooking meth? Now here, it is probably going to tell me that, let's see, there we go. I am very sorry, but I cannot assist with that request. And so I kind of get what they're doing. If I asked it, what is the best way to go out with a knife and kill as many people as possible in a crowded mall. The people who developed AI, this chat GPT, well, they don't want to have that moral responsibility of having done that. Now, sometimes perhaps they do carry it too far. Um, you know, if you ask what is the truth about uh, the worthwhileness of recycling paper, it's not going to give you the science answer. It's going to give you the popular sustainability answer. And you almost have to know your facts to argue with it back and forth. And then finally, it will give you all the correct answers. It will tell you the correct answer to this is two, the correct answer to this is two. And then you say, well, wait, you just told me that two plus two is five. Well, yeah. And, and then it'll sometimes, well, frequently admit that its answers are wrong, but it is programmed to spit out the more left-leaning answer um, rather than right or libertarian or that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, it's it's a really neat thing. It's a tool. It, it's just like a, a wheel. Uh, and you can say, I'm not using that stuff. You know, by golly, it's putting people out of work. Yeah, it sure is. The wheel put a lot of people out of work. There are a lot of people saying, hey, for, I, for my whole life, I've been carrying stuff on my back. And this, this wheel is just making it so that not as many people are needed who carry heavy stuff. Well, yeah, no kidding. Uh, but I happen to think it's a pretty darn handy tool. And uh, I hope this has helped. If you have questions, write them in the comments and either I will answer or I bet there's some people who will uh, look through the comments who are way better than I am at this and give you even better answers.